Tenta. I'm here to help strengthen your guitar skills and today I'm going to help strengthen your music theory skills and your sense of melody and harmony and also hopefully songwriters out there you'll pick up some really um, interesting techniques about how to make an amazing song. The song you're hearing is called The Night Belongs to Mona and it's by Donald Fagan of Steely Dan fame from one of his uh, own albums called Morph the Cat. There's the man himself. Perfect songwriter in terms of marrying melody with harmony, and, but not in the 251 kind of way of putting together a song or even how could I analyze this? I had a hard time even deciding what key it was in. So we're going to talk about some of these things. And I've got the chord progression all written out. I will put it in a link in the description so you will be able to see this amazing chord progression. And you're about to hear most of it. I'm just going to go through uh, the whole song and just point out some things. So the song starts with an introduction which you actually hear in the hook, I guess, of the song, what I'm calling the B section. Uh, then you get the verse, which starts on a C major 7 chord. Now, I just arrived on A minor sounds like we're now in A minor. That's related to C major, so that makes sense. But the next chord is a C9, or C dominant seventh chord. So he's taken what I think you could call the keynote at the beginning, made it a dominant seventh, which now goes to F, which it does. But then he yanks you back, because in the bass it goes back to that C major 7 chord. So I guess you could say it's in C major there for the most part. Uh, the B section. As he goes into the B section, he has this very interesting chord change. expect da, but he lands on a B flat 13 da. so the melody note is the second scale degree of B flat 13 which resolves to A minor 6 and then you get this intro that is amazing it's um, this is part of the B section which I call the hook but he uses this as the introductory six measures. And there's a motive here. There's a rhythmic motive and a melodic motive. The rhythmic motive is
which is very distinctive. And how he harmonizes that is... seven chord, C sharp to A, and then on the C major seven he's got D to E, and then he's got uh, on the E flat major seven chord, he's got D to F, so that motive kind of rises from C sharp to E to D to F. that he lands on is probably the most interesting chord of the song. It's an A flat major 7 with a sharp 11, you could call that sharp 4, which would be a D. But the melody is, goes up to an F, which is the 13th. And I think the keyboard voicing for that is probably A flat, G, C, D, F. It's not easy on the guitar, but... And then you expect to go back to the verse, which is on a C chord, maybe a G7 to get you back. But he plays... He plays a D flat 7, which is the tritone substitution of G7. So he sneaks you back in descending a half step into that C chord. After the second verse, then there's a new section, brand new, and I will play that so you can hear it first, and then I'll talk about it. sunshine breaking out of the clouds moment in the song. So I want to talk about that a little bit. He starts the C section with a chord that you see a lot in this song. It's a dominant seven with a flat five. Now who starts a section with a chord like that? Donald Fagan. And D sends a half step into F minor. Hmm, so it kind of sounds like we're now in F minor or maybe... Maybe we're in A flat, because you get that. You actually get a two, five, which sounds like it's going to go to A flat, but it does not. A lot of my notes as I was analyzing this thing said, well, it should go here, but you get this instead. And those are the great compositional surprises that make this fun to listen to. So instead of going to A flat, he goes D flat major seven. Woo! That is called a D flat eleven, or you could think about it as a C flat major seven chord. something 
uh, very surprising here. He stays on the D flat major seven and then plays an F sharp minor eleven. Maybe it's good. And you're back to the verse. Okay, how he made that work, I'm not sure, but it does. Then at the towards the end of that verse. He has a little extension, which I call the D section, and this is new material. And what he's doing is he's harmonizing one note, basically. seven sharp 11 with the 13th in the melody I love this song again it has it's so unusual it doesn't use the normal chord progressions of like two five one or um, it doesn't stay within the notes of a major scale for instance it really moves around quite a bit but you don't really get that sense it's just a beautiful song with some lush harmonies. You get that perfect combination of like lush jazz harmonies with kind of that R&B funk groove and feel, which I love. So if you haven't used dominant seventh flat five chords before, he used six of them in this song, you know, and you hear him more than that because things repeat. Three of those descend down like want to use them use them kind of as an approach uh, you know approaching an arrival a half step below where you are right that's the dominant seven flat five the other thing he uses a lot of is just major seventh chords so if you haven't used those before they're beautiful some extensions so if you want to play a major 7 with a sharp 11 that's also beautiful this is a B flat you've got the root the major 7 the third and then the sharp 11 sharp 4 which is an E and you just hear those notes like interacting and swirling around it's a beautiful chord all right, everybody, I hope that um, makes you want to go and listen to Morph the Cat, the whole CD by Donald Fagan. It's just fantastic. And John Harrington and Wayne Krantz are two of the guitar players that are featured on the album, and they sound fantastic. And maybe this gave you some ideas about how to do some unusual chord progressions that sound 
beautiful. Good luck, everybody. I'll see you at the next video.